Good morning uh, again. My name is Sonar Tarim. I work for Harmony Public Schools. Uh, as part of our uh, panel discussion, we were asked to cover uh, two questions, two uh, main questions. Uh, those were, how can Houston be recognized as, uh, as a, a leader in STEM education? And the second one, how you know, my organization or our organization you know, can contribute towards this uh, goal? So in order for me to respond to uh, these, uh, these uh, two uh, important questions, I want to talk about you know, what we do, you know, give you some little background about our organization. Uh, Harmony Public Schools are K-12 uh, public charter school system based in Houston, Texas. And our mission from day one was to provide a safe uh, environment for our students, specifically emphasizing on math, science, education. When we started in 2000, uh, only a few handful of people were, were talking about STEM education. Uh, founders of this organization really uh, paid attention to STEM education. So uh, at the time, STEM was not a buzzword. Uh, and, and I don't want to say we created that word, but we, we felt that it was really important for our nation. And you have seen the statistics earlier that uh, that's one of the reasons we actually got into to establish this system. And, uh, and the next slide uh, shows that uh, we established our first school as a pilot program in Houston uh, with 200 students. Uh, and, uh, and then the first five years, uh, we were piloting this program in different cities. Uh, in 2002, uh, Austin location was open, and then 2004, Dallas location. So as, as part of our uh, you know, uh, program, we felt that we, have, we can try this, see if, if it's working, this STEM education. We knew that it was going to work, and then we can take it to scale, because uh, a lot of the uh, previous distinguished panelists talked about the importance of uh, taking uh, to a scale. So starting with the help of Gates Foundation and Dell Foundation in 2006, six seven, you can see we start uh, establishing five schools a year, average, with uh, you know, several thousands of students. And now uh, we are serving, we are actually serving 24,000 students uh, in those uh, 38 locations throughout the state. And the next slide uh, shows uh, the growth in terms of uh, student population. In Houston, we had 200 kids. We started as a six, seven, and eighth grade school program, first, first time. And then uh, with the intention of eighth graders will be a ninth graders, 10th graders, and so on. It will be a six through 12th uh, you know, uh, school program. But we realized that in 2005, that a lot of the kids who come to sixth grade from other public schools were behind one or two grade levels. So we felt that uh, starting in 2005, this program should be K through 12 program. And we felt that we have to catch the students early on at the elementary school level that we can actually seize uh, the understanding or, 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 or the you know, desire to be in STEM field. So, uh, in, and you can see in 2005, once that you know, uh, took off and replicated this program, we were adding 4,000, average 4,000 students a, a year until now. And uh, last several years, uh, in addition to our enrollment numbers, we start keeping our waitlist numbers. There's a huge demand in Texas because uh, of, of STEM education and importance of STEM education. Uh, last year, we had 40 plus thousand parents on our waiting list. And these schools are tuition free uh, public schools. And uh, this year, uh, our enrollment period started. Already, uh, we have uh, close to 39,000 applications. People are on a waiting list. And we know that by uh, the first day of school, we'll, we'll have close to maybe 60,000 applicants. Unfortunately, we don't have a space. We're going to only enroll 2,000 of them for this coming year. So, and next slides also show that we are a relatively young organization. When we started in 2000 in Houston, uh, our first location, our first seniors was in 2005, only 16 students. And as we had more uh, you know, uh, schools, more campuses, our uh, you know, uh, seniors, number of graduating seniors are increasing. And you can see by 2015, we'll have 30, over 1,300. And by 2020, we'll have uh, over uh, you know, several thousand students graduating from our schools. The reason I show this, uh, you know, uh, in my later slides, you will see what percent of those kids enter in STEM fields. And uh, the next slide talks about why STEM. And I'm, I mean, you, you already heard so many things about you know, why we have to have a STEM education and, uh, you know, and uh, take it to a scale. But I just want to highlight that there's a, uh, there's a demand in STEM education. And uh, by 2018, the uh, number of uh, jobs requiring uh, STEM training uh, will increase to 
2.7 million. When we talk about uh, the uh, you know uh, unemployment in in the United States, uh, there is almost none I can say in STEM fields. So there are always uh, more uh, more people. Industrial leaders talk about that they are looking for highly skilled, highly qualified people in their uh, you know for their companies. And then uh, STEM also is one of the fastest uh, growing sector. And uh, based on the uh, U.S. Department of Education labor uh, statistics, that uh, 15 out of 20 fastest growing uh, you know occupations require STEM uh, uh, related basically uh, you know, uh, skills. And then finally, as we have uh, more uh, global uh, competition uh, gets tougher, a lot of the policymakers uh, try to figure out how to increase uh, STEM related uh, you know, majors. And then uh, and if you want to be a you know, uh, you know, powerhouse, economic powerhouse, uh, we have to have uh, STEM leadership uh, uh, in the United States. And, and the next slide uh, shows uh, specifically Texas numbers. And the top uh, graph talk about uh, you know number of uh, STEM degrees awarded uh, in uh, Texas universities, and as of 2009, uh, we had only 12,000 uh, bachelor's uh, BS degrees in, in STEM fields, as opposed to we had uh, we needed 22,000. This is the report by Hi Higher Education Board, and the bottom sli uh, slide bottom uh, graphs talk about basically how many STEM uh, you know certificates, teachers in the STEM certificates as opposed to how many we, we needed. So these are really critical uh, you know, statistics for, for our uh, state. And, uh, and how, do we, how do we get, uh, you know, basically close this gap and we find enough uh, number of STEM uh, you know, people in, in our field is, uh, you know, first thing that actually, we can talk about so many things, but in our schools, in, in our charter schools, focusing on uh, STEM education, first thing that we have uh, started doing in our schools that everybody, every student starting at, uh, you know, early on, uh, fourth grade, all the way up, they have to do science fair. And when I talk about science fair, it's not a simple science fair project. And it takes uh, almost four, four months to, for a student to complete a science fair project. They start in September, first semester. With, uh, they, come up, they have to come up with a hypothesis. And then just like they have to follow a scientific process, they have to collect data and, you know, uh, basically talk with teachers and in September, October, and then, uh, you know, basically write a uh, discussion, conclusion, and, you know, create uh, plots and prepare a poster presentation. By the end of the semester, four, four months of, of work, they have to display their science fair, science fair project in front of the, you know, uh, judges. And uh, we feel that if, if a child has been doing this over and over, every year starting fourth grade, and, uh, you know, they are not only understand how a science uh, in a scientific process works, but they can apply the same thing in English language, art, social studies, whatever the subject area, whatever they actually come across in their life. I think that actually enables them, without, without them understanding, they enables them to like math and science and uh, they actually tackle every challenges throughout their life. So because of that, our students participate a lot of science fair competition wherever they are available, whether it's a local, state, and national competitions. And in our schools, uh, students represent the United States in so many different countries representing uh, in, in science fair competition. And next slide also uh, talks about the most recent things that are happening, uh, you know, throughout the schools, public schools. It's a robotics competition. We really value the importance of ro robotics competition and starting elementary school level and middle school and high school level, every uh, child involves, uh, you know, uh, in class or after school or Saturday robotics, uh, you know, experiences. We feel that uh, these are important activities, hands-on uh, uh, things that, uh, you know, basically intrigues uh, student interest in, in education, engineering. And the next slides uh, basically <coughs> talks about why I, I've seen uh, two slides uh, to talk about science fair education or after school you know, activities like robotics because recently Texas A&M has done a research uh, in our schools and they asked two questions. How does uh, you know, Harmony compare national average for STEM education, STEM uh, you know, major matriculation? The second question was about you know, uh, what is the relationship between STEM after school uh, clubs, science fair participation and their STEM uh, you know, uh, major uh, selection? for their future. And the uh, next slide will show that if you look at these uh, findings uh, by the Texas A&M uh, recent study, and it, this is published uh, in one of the uh, journals, scientific journal, and uh, overall, overall, 88% um, uh, of our students uh, basically enter 
uh, in four-year colleges. Uh, and then 65% uh, of them uh, chooses to be in STEM education fields. So this is a large scale, and we're talking about right now, uh, of course, uh, you know, a few hundred graduate seniors. As we have more and more schools and more seniors uh, join to our, uh, you know, program, we're, we're going to talk about several thousand students every year uh, selecting to be in STEM field. If you look at, uh, you know, uh, different demographics among, uh, you know, and, and if you compare the STEM matriculation harmony 65% as opposed to national average is 33%, our numbers are almost double. So 65% of our students uh, chooses or enter STEM-related uh, fields for their undergrad degrees. And if you look at the uh, breakdown of ethnic uh, background, 94% of our African-American students uh, enter uh, STEM fields to study uh, you know, undergrad degree in STEM-related fields. And uh, uh, national average is 18%. So almost all of our uh, you know, African-American students uh, more than half of the Hispanic students and then 68% uh, of white uh, population chooses uh, in, to be in STEM fields. Uh, these numbers are always, you know, uh, two times or three times higher than national average. And this is the impact that uh, Harmony uh, schools are creating uh, in the lives of, uh, of our, our students. And um, next slide. Uh, we also looked at uh, the relationship between, uh, you know, how many years a, a child conducts science fair in school and its relationship if they want to be a, you know, a science related field or a number of uh, club activities. I'm not going to uh, you know, bore you with, with uh, chi-square statistics, but next slide actually summarizes. Uh, basically, a result shows that uh, Harmony Public Schools outperform the national average in, in terms of post-secondary admission to STEM uh, major selection. Uh, students who are conducting multiple year science fair projects, this is scientific fact, students who conduct multiple year science fair projects competition were positively related to student choosing post-secondary STEM education. And why this is important? We need, the, we need to support science fair activities. I know earlier uh, slide a lot of industry leaders, they mentioned that they support science fair activities. It is critical that we continue to fund uh, citywide, statewide and national science fair competition. We know that we can compete in football, basketball, any other area, but why not uh, create similar uh, venue for our students to uh, you know, uh, have competition, whether it's robotics or any other uh, subject area. We also looked at the uh, relationship between number of STEM clubs uh, participation and their choice in STEM field, and it's also you know, positively uh, connected with kids who participate in club activities, whether it's after school or uh, Saturday club activities, they end up in STEM fields uh, after they finish high school. So, and, um, and in our schools, uh, next slide, uh, in our schools that uh, we know that not everybody wants to do uh, maybe math and science or STEM related fields, but you know, uh, as part of our program, we provide them uh, pre uh, you know, pathways, medical science, media technology pathways, and, and humanities, political science, all those are, are offered and we, everyone values uh, these pathways because uh, you, you, can, you can create an option uh, for every one of our students. Dual credit also, uh, you know, talked about earlier, uh, very critical, very important uh, connection with, uh, you know, community colleges, especially we work with Houston community colleges. Uh, and of course, when the funding is not, not there, it, it creates some obstacles for, for our, you know, uh, students, but uh, it's important. And also, you know, peer AP, AP courses, uh, the number of students who participate in uh, peer AP, AP courses positively correlated for students actually studying in advanced uh, degrees uh, in, in, uh, in STEM fields. And finally, uh, and you have seen an example of, of this uh, today that we create, next slide, talks about partnership. Uh, and uh, we have to have a partnership. I think everyone uh, agree, uh, agree today that uh, industry, K-12, and institution partnership are critical uh, for our nation, for our state. We got to have uh, industry around the table with, with K through 12 schools and colleges and community colleges to create a strong bond and strong uh, program so that we can have more students, uh, you know, selects and choose to be in Stanfields. So, thank you. <laughs>